but it just seems to be purely circling around the fact that there is an exam to be passed, and it was just a load of facts which you just learned. You know, I mean, why? Why, why, why? And so one felt that there was the art side of the course, and there was the science side of the course, and he wanted from one part of the school to the other, and he wanted from one world to another. I did six months in industry at Baker Street after school, and there I had my basic inspiration for a good four years at university, just because I actually did what, what I'd learned. I used the, the, the equipment that I'd, I, I mean, the tools, the equipment that I'd learned at school. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but personally, I learned a lot more from experiment than from theory. Mm. Well, I knew absolutely nothing about engineering, so I decided to set the devil you know than the one you don't, and I'll do chemistry. And I think this is true of a lot of people. They don't know anything at all about engineering, so they're going to chemistry, which is probably a lot, because they might be better than most five times. But it doesn't matter what subject you do, you've got to combine theory with experiment. I mean, even if you do languages, you can't prove that you assimilated to any degree unless you go abroad and try it out on the actual people. At school, too many pupils experience education as merely a closed body of hard facts. Facts firmly anchored to the classroom and laboratory, finding known answers to long-solved problems which have lost their interest, their relevance, or both. Progrès dans l'enseignement des langues. Already, in languages, traditional teaching molds have cracked. Words no longer lie embalmed in textbooks, but are brought to bear on everyday problems and pursuits. Even mathematics, for too long to too many a confusion of A's and B's, angles and lines, X's and Y's, can be stripped of its terrors to reveal not only its relevance, but often a cold, austere beauty. But in the world outside, subject boundaries are breaking down. Science, medicine and engineering are enriching one another and developing into new fields of creative technology. Fields such as bioengineering, where problems have no right or wrong answers. A world where knowledge is used creatively to design and build for human needs. Is the creative talent needed in these new technologies passing unnoticed through our schools simply because traditional concepts of education fail to recognize and develop it? In science teaching, the Nuffield approach has brought a major step forward. The pupil is allowed to find out for himself. Like real scientists, he builds his knowledge by trial and error. Insight is gained through experiment, by actually doing science. But thinking in science education has not stopped with Nuffield. The Nuffield schemes are concerned with getting over the pitfalls of the sciences in a much more interesting way than has been done in the past. But plenty of the pupils have this other creative element trying to get out and in the normal school examinations getting no recognition at all. So in this way the project work approach is complementary. At Seven Oak School the Technical Activity Centre aims to do just this. To the experience of science, we are that of technology. The boys state their targets, as it were, but the master in charge provides the ladder. Thus, for instance, a boy wanting to make a radio-controlled aeroplane must study the elementary principles involved by following the courses mapped out for him. Practical interest must be used as a lead into the necessary theoretical study. We see it as a natural extension of a liberal education. An interesting and easily arranged extension is a school relationship with cooperative local industry. In this way, cross-fertilization of ideas and methods is broadening the horizons of the classroom in many of our schools throughout the country. Other schools are similarly trying to integrate creative technology into the normal curriculum. Clay Valley Technical High School is a school where 
there is a broadly built curriculum, and within this curriculum, technology is learned to give an extra breadth to the theoretical subject which I'm studying. The problems which are presented at the early stages will naturally be modest, and the solutions may be fairly crude. The jobs they attempt are modest jobs. They make little boxes, and in order to make a successful box, they must know how strong the box is going to be. And to that end, we make model joints. They test the model joints to find out how strong they are, and they will be able to use this information not only in the jobs they're making at the moment, but in later jobs where they have more ambitious projects to achieve. In the middle, the boys follow a normal academic course, plus this creative technology. One lad had already built himself a go-kart. His difficulty was that it would not stop. There was a problem, how to stop it. This problem has been solved. The boy designed, manufactured a hydraulic disc brake. Everything was made at the school, and it was the boy's solution to his problem. Gateway School Leicester, which sees this sort of work as essential for even the most academically able. This school was founded with uh, one aim in mind, to create a school appropriate for the 20th century. We believe this kind of work should be done because it's educationally desirable. In fact, it's an educational necessity. Adolescents need a sense of success. The fundamental rules of the school is that the individual counts. Everything stems from that. And therefore, in the lower part of the school, the fundamental point about the work is the creative craftsman. And in the upper end of the school, the fundamental thing is technological study. Mr. Pope says, you could build a machine on a logic system that would play knots and crosses. And this interested me. It's been something I could invent myself. I got rather flattered my ego that I could invent something. I used to find it science times did tend to be a bit limited. You get the tremendous scope for originality. I think because he wasn't, uh, because he wasn't a scientist or a mathematician, he probably got more out of it because it gave him an opportunity to see the other side. It was suggested that the harmonograph uh, could be used to extend the study of harmonic motion, and harmonograms were, were drawn. Well, these were very amusing and very interesting, but it was noticed that on some of them, we saw a secondary pattern, which wasn't actually inscribed by the pen, and producing what we later discovered was a worry pattern, and uh, it was soon noticed that, in fact, this was an amplifying device. Because if you move the point of vision very slightly, you got a, a large disturbance of the pattern. And it was thought that we could make use of this amplifying factor to um, design and construct a comparator. Uh, this was done by setting up um, one grating on a piece of perspex, making the main scale, and uh, superimposed in front of this another piece of the same grating the photoresistor would respond to the dark fringes passing across the light. As we had now a, a device that would count the fringes as required to bring the carriage up to one end of the gauge pit. The study of the recording of um, fingerprints was then topical. We found that by using parallel gratings on fingerprints, we were producing worry patterns. Was there here, in fact, a useful line of inquiry that would help us to find a method whereby fingerprints could be classified? We thought it would be an excellent idea to have plastic formings for various reasons. So uh, we decided we'd build our own. Well, it worked very well, very well indeed. And we allowed an initial sum of uh, 20 pounds to cover the the use of um, air or fluid uh, under pressure to do the things which electronics things can do. In other words, you could make a fluid computer 
this boy decided that um, anything the electronics people could do, he could do, he set about trying to do it. And therefore decided to use water as a fluid. Now this is demonstrating the, uh, the Coanda effect, in fact. The fact that water will stick to one side or the other side of um, a suitably shaped channel unless it's forced to change its position by some small pressure from the side. And what the young man was learning by experiment, industry is applying using the same principles to develop a pressure-actuated water switch. Mr. Watson since told me that the examiner said that this is chap of yours doing fluidic talk about the kind of effect. I expect you he doesn't know a thing about what he's talking about. He's copied it all out of the book. This is a typical case of the boy knowing more than the master. Now the Schlieren thing, yes. Now this was another um, self-motivated project, really. But the most important amount of information I I learned was the uh, use of Schlieren, the actual application of the apparatus, which is of course a very important system. It isn't used so much in the way I used it, it's used in um, testing wing shapes in wind tunnels more often. And he thought that if he could actually see osmosis taking place by Schlieren methods, then this would be an ideal project. And he came in. The engineering science syllabus is being developed by the Joint Matriculation Board as an alternative to traditional A-level physics. This new examination is essentially physical science, based largely on engineering concepts and engineering techniques with mathematics. It has gained acceptance by many university departments of both physics and engineering, and does not require the student to burn his boat at 16 or 18 years of age. The topics in the engineering science syllabus is composed of topics one would find in the A-level syllabus, but grouped together under different headings, such as the flow of heat, and the flow of electricity, and the flow of fluids, would be grouped together under the heading of transport phenomena. And basically, I think, uh, in developing principles, wherever possible, through applications, rather than from principles to applications. A uh, simple example would be um, Bernoulli's principle. Uh, well, we might start by thinking of flight, the lift force necessary on wing sections, and um, investigate from this the elementary principles of uh, fluid flow, and then working back to explain how uh, the relationship between velocity of inner fluid and reduction in pressure leads to a lift force. We would uh, expect him to conduct investigations into, say, comparison of methods for some determination, maybe um, moment of inertia of the disk. He, uh, he'd probably start with the rolling disk method. Uh, they can also undertake a project. Examples, the linear induction of engineering technology is now trying to equip teachers with the necessary skills for introducing creative technology to their pupils. We're trying to give teachers in schools sufficient background so that they can start and maintain project work in schools. Uh, for class teachers we do basic science, on the other hand for science teachers we do basic class. Nowadays electronics is involved in so many aspects of modern technology that it is important that all teachers have got some idea of this and they all make a bistable unit this is virtually the, a starting point for a variety of other projects. And so each course member used his bistable unit, which has all been combined in this small binary adder. We have encouraged the teachers on the course to investigate various ways of flow measurement. And on the water wheel, the device is an ordinary standard V notch, where the head of the water flowing over it is proportional to the rate of flow of water. It is emphasised all the way along that it is eventually for the benefit of the pupils, the children, not so much for the teacher that comes on the course. And I feel that in the whole field of project work, this must always be remembered. The development of this approach to learning, based upon demonstration, application, problem-type experiments, open-ended investigations and projects may seem at first a bit frightening. 
but one cannot rightly conceive of the curriculum as made up of three separate elements, the literary, the scientific, and the technological. One must think in terms of an integrated curriculum, with technology providing the integrating factor for the whole. These many differing philosophies have one common objective, to develop the pupils' creative qualities of imaginative thought. Whatever their chosen careers, they will all enjoy one vital advantage, the advantage of understanding some of the science and technology in their fast-changing world, enabling them more easily to meet and overcome the problems of progress and of human happiness.